ever get that feeling. Never. Like you really want to understand something big that's happening, you know, really wrap your head around it. But you don't want to have to wade through a ton of jargon and technical stuff to do it. Yeah, absolutely. We all want to be in the know, right? Hmm. Especially with stuff that has the potential to really change things. Right. And today, that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking a deep dive, okay. cutting through the noise to get to the core of this huge development in aviation that literally just broke yesterday. China's Comac C-949 supersonic airliner unveiled just yesterday, March 29, 2025. Yeah, March 29th, a date that could end up being pretty significant in aviation history. We'll have to see. And we're basing this deep dive on a really fascinating academic paper straight from the engineers at Comac themselves. So we're going right to the source. Straight to the source. Love it. Yeah. And what are we looking for specifically in this paper? What's the mission here? Well, we really want to distill down the most important things about the C-949, like what makes it tick, what it could mean for the future of how we fly, you know, avoiding the technical rabbit holes, but really getting to the heart of it. What does it all mean? And honestly, from even the initial announcements, this thing is making some really bold promises. I mean, Mach 1.6 cruising speed, that's already impressive. Yeah, supersonic flight is back on the menu, it seems. But then on top of that, they're claiming a range that's a full 50% greater than the Concorde, which, let's be honest, is kind of the gold standard when we think about supersonic passenger travel. Yeah, the Concorde is iconic. Totally. But here's the thing that maybe is even more significant. I'm curious to get your take on this. They're claiming the C-949 is going to be so much quieter than previous supersonic aircraft, which could potentially open up supersonic flight over land. I mean, that's the holy grail, right? It could be absolutely huge. I mean, think about it. If they can actually pull that off, it would fundamentally change how we travel. Exactly. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. But before we get into the nitty gritty of the C-949, I think it's worth taking a quick trip down memory lane and revisiting the Concorde. Because as you said, it really is the benchmark. Absolutely. The Concorde was, and in many ways still is, the ultimate symbol of supersonic passenger travel. That speed, Mach 2.04, cutting transatlantic flight times to under three and a half hours, it really captured the imagination. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to get from New York to London in under four hours? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for the Concorde, was it? Unfortunately, no. The Concorde had some pretty significant limitations. The most glaring one was the sonic booms. Those things were intense. Over 105 decibels at takeoff. Oh, yeah. I've heard recordings. It sounds like an explosion. Basically, yeah. That kind of noise obviously caused a lot of concern and led to many countries, including the U.S., banning supersonic flight over land. And that was a major blow for the Concorde's viability. Right. It severely limited where it could fly, which defeats the purpose of being supersonic in many cases. And then you had the high operating costs and, of course, the tragic crash in 2000, which understandably shook public confidence. All of this ultimately led to its retirement in 2003. Exactly. And that retirement left a real gap in the market for ultra-fast travel. But in a way, it also set the stage for a new generation of supersonic aircraft, aircraft designed to overcome the Concorde's limitations. And that's where we see companies like Boom Supersonic coming in, right? Absolutely. Boom has been making waves with their Overture aircraft, which they're aiming to have flying commercially by the end of this decade. Their target is Mach 1.7, with a range that would enable routes like Seattle to Tokyo in under five hours. And remember, earlier this year, they actually flew their XB-1 demonstrator aircraft past Mach 1, so they're making tangible progress. Yeah, they're not just talking about it, they're actually building and testing which is exciting. And then you have NASA, who've been doing a lot of research on how to mitigate those sonic booms with their X-59 project. That one's supposed to fly for the first time later this year, right? That's right. The X-59 is designed to produce a much quieter sonic boom, something they're describing as more of a thump than a boom. And the data they gather from these test flights could be crucial in informing new regulations for supersonic flight. So it's a really interesting landscape right now. You've got companies like Boom pushing the boundaries of speed and range, and you've got NASA doing this groundbreaking research on noise reduction. And now China enters the picture with the C-949. Feels like a real race is on to define the future of supersonic travel. Definitely feels that way. And it'll be fascinating to see how all these different players influence and learn from each other. Okay, let's dive into the specifics of the C-949. Based on what Comac has shared in their paper, what are the key specs that really jump out at you? Well, as you mentioned earlier, the cruising speed is Mach 1.6, which puts it a little bit behind the Concorde, but still significantly faster than anything else in commercial service today. Right. 
But what about the range? That's the thing that really struck me as a potential game changer. 11,000 kilometers. Yeah, 11,000 kilometers, which is about 6,835 miles for those who prefer miles. That's a full 50% greater than the Concorde's range. And to put that into perspective, what kind of routes would that enable? I mean, think about it. Shanghai to New York nonstop. Beijing to London. These are routes that were simply impossible for the Concorde to fly without refueling stops. Oh, so this really does open up a whole new world of possibilities for long-haul travel, <laughs> especially for business travelers who often place a premium on time. Absolutely. Direct flights between major financial hubs without the need for layovers could be a huge game-changer for international business. Okay, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. Or rather, the sound that's hopefully not going to be in the room, if you know what I mean. The sonic boom, or the lack thereof. Comac is making some very bold claims about how quiet the C949 will be. How much quieter are we talking? They're claiming a sonic boom intensity that's just 1 20th that of the Concorde. 1 20th. So how would that sound to someone on the ground? Comac describes it as a gentle thud, similar to distant thunder. Now, it's important to remember that we're still in the early stages here, and these are just projections based on their designs and simulations. Real-world testing will be crucial. Of course. But if they can actually achieve that level of noise reduction, it would be a monumental breakthrough. Because, let's be honest, that sonic boom was the single biggest obstacle for the Concorde. It's the reason we haven't seen widespread supersonic passenger travel for decades. Absolutely. It led to those bans on overland supersonic flight that we talked about earlier. So if the C949 can genuinely overcome that hurdle, it could open up a whole new era of supersonic travel. Okay, let's get a bit more technical for a moment. The Comac paper does offer some clues about how they're approaching the design of the C949. What are some of the key features that stand out to you? Well, one thing they highlight is the use of a low aspect ratio delta wing, which is similar to what the Concorde used. I'm not an engineer, but I remember that the delta wing was kind of the Concorde's signature look. Why is that shape so important for supersonic flight? Well, in very simple terms, a delta wing helps to reduce drag at supersonic speeds, which is obviously crucial for efficiency and performance. It also provides a lot of lift which you need when you're traveling at those speeds. But the C949 isn't just copying the Concorde's design, they're leveraging decades of advancements in aerodynamics and materials science. So what's different this time around? For one thing, they're using advanced computational fluid dynamics, which basically involves creating very detailed computer simulations of how air flows over the aircraft. This allows them to optimize the shape of the wings and fuselage to minimize those shock waves that create the sonic boom. So it's like they're sculpting the aircraft with the help of computers to make it as slippy through the air as possible, even at supersonic speeds. That's a great way to put it. They're also likely using new materials like lightweight composites and heat-resistant alloys, which can further improve efficiency and durability. And I imagine the engines play a big role too, right? Absolutely. They're probably looking at things like variable cycle engines, which can adjust their operation depending on the phase of flight. So they can be super powerful for supersonic cruising, but also so quieter and more fuel efficient during takeoff and landing. It sounds like there's a lot of really sophisticated technology going into this aircraft. But it's also important to remember that the C949 isn't just a technological marvel. It's also a very strategic project for China. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Comac is a state-owned enterprise, so this aircraft is very much tied to China's broader ambitions in aerospace and technology. So how does the C949 fit into that bigger picture? Well, for starters, it aligns perfectly with China's Made in China 2025 initiative, which is all about boosting domestic innovation and becoming a global leader in key industries, including aerospace. So this is about more than just building a fast airplane. It's about national pride, technological prowess, and potentially challenging the dominance of Western companies like Boeing and Airbus. Precisely. China wants to be a major player in the global aviation market, and the C-949 is a very visible symbol of that ambition. Okay, let's bring it back to that potential sonic boom breakthrough. Mm -hmm. If they can pull it off, what would be the most significant implications? Well, as we've discussed, it could potentially lead to the lifting of those bands on overland supersonic flight. And that would be absolutely revolutionary. Imagine being able to fly from Beijing to Shanghai in under an hour. Or from London to New York in two hours. Yeah, it would shrink the world in a very tangible way. But even if those bands aren't lifted immediately, the C-940N's longer range and quieter operation could still have a major impact on international travel. 
Absolutely. Even if supersonic flight is limited to overwater segments, you're still looking at significant time savings on long haul routes. And that has huge implications for businesses, tourism, and global connectivity. So the C-949 isn't just about going fast. It's about going far and doing it quietly. And that's a potentially winning combination. But of course, there are still a lot of challenges ahead. Oh, for sure. Developing and building a supersonic aircraft is incredibly complex and expensive. And then you have the hurdle of international certification. Even if China gives the C-949 the green light, it'll still need to meet the safety and noise standards of other countries if it's going to fly internationally. And there's also the geopolitical dimension to consider. We're living in a world where tensions between China and the West are rising, so there could be some hesitancy from certain countries to fully embrace a Chinese-made supersonic aircraft, even if it meets all the technical requirements. Yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind. The C-949 is entering a very complex global landscape, and its success will depend not just on its technological capabilities, but also on how COMAC navigates these political and economic realities. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what are the key takeaways for our listeners? What should they be watching for as this story unfolds? Well, I think the C-949 represents a really bold move by China. It's a statement that they're serious about becoming a leader in the aerospace industry and reshaping the future of air travel. And whether they succeed or not, it's going to be fascinating to watch. This project has the potential to really shake things up, both technologically and geopolitically. Absolutely. And I think it raises some really interesting questions about how technology can impact our lives and our world. If supersonic travel becomes more commonplace, how will that change the way we do business, how we connect with people, and even how we perceive distance and time? That's a great question. And it's something for all of us to ponder as we follow the development of the C-949 and the broader evolution of supersonic flight. Who knows, maybe in a few years, hopping on a supersonic jet for a weekend trip across the globe will be as routine as catching a flight to a neighboring city today. That would be quite the shift. But hey, if the Concorde taught us anything, it's that the impossible can sometimes become reality. We'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. Indeed. And on that note, we'll leave you with this thought. If you could travel anywhere in the world in just a few hours, where would you go? And what would you do with all the extra time you'd have? Think about it. And until next time, keep exploring the frontiers of knowledge.